why is there not more climate action? I mean, clearly on one side, there are a lot of structural barriers in place, not the least from the government. And there are also very serious questions of privilege, which we'll talk about later on. But if we talk about peers, about people just like you and me, your friends and your family, there are also really important psychological barriers. It's a clear source of frustration. I mean, what someone who's already moved to action sees that environmental awareness is a mile wide, but just an inch deep. And what I mean to say is that everyone seems to be concerned, but no one really gives it a high priority. So this is like this gap between attitude, I think doing this is a good thing, and behavior, but I'm not doing it. So why is that? So together with psychologist Lea Dom from Psychologists for Future Germany, I've dived, I dived into this topic. And very soon we found the work of Dr. Robert Griffiths. And he actually looked at these psychological barriers and he categorized them into seven dragons of inaction. Seven gatekeepers that basically that we need to pass to allow ourselves to move to real action. So let's have a look at them. The first dragon of inaction is our basic competence to understand the problem. You see, we have this ancient brain in our head that is reacting to abrupt, close and visible problems, dangers. And frankly, these ecological crises are nothing like that. They are a lot slower than the rhythm at which our brain thinks. And also, they are not as visible until it's your own town that gets washed away. So we need to keep on reminding ourselves and informing ourselves the entire time of the real situation and the urgency, as the climate clock behind me is indicating. And as you're doing this, as you're reading articles and maybe even scientific papers, keep in mind that humans are famously less rational than once believed. Um, the solution that we need to present here is that we need to connect emotionally and be moved by the love for your friends and for your family. We need to be moved by the love for your newborn nephews, or maybe even by the cruel consequences of this crisis, or who knows, by the beauty of the natural world. So our second problem here, our second dragon, are the uh, ideologies. And ideologies, I mean, it's good to, to trust the system, but it only works if you also realize its limitations. For instance, believing in a god, I have no problem with it, but you need to know that saying that all of this is part of God's plan can be dangerous. Same goes, for instance, by saying that these ecological crises are maybe Mother Nature trying to teach us a lesson. Same goes market capitalism, saying that it will even it up again, or believing that technology alone will save us. The key words for this dragon are green growth, molten salt nuclear reactors, or geoengineering. Now the third item is something that I keep close to my heart, and that's a really important one that we constantly are looking to compare ourselves to others. How relatable is it that you are reading about the climate crisis and the news totally freaks you out? But then a little bit later you look outside of the window and seemingly no one else is panicking. So as we are mostly doing what others are doing, um, we need to define our social norms. If we have our neighbors installing solar panels next to our houses, then it's a lot easier for us to do the same. Also, if you have your best friend that close to a climate march, it can be really motivating. But it works also in the other direction. If you are the only one going to a climate march, it's very near to say, okay, but if no one else is caring, why should I care about it? So in the daily life, we need to look for allies, both in the professional world and on private level. And in the end, uh, nothing is as convincing as the voice or the call of a loved one. The fourth element that I wanted to talk about is, are the investments and the sunk costs that we have already made in the future and that we need to give up. These can be financial or social, but 
take this as a brief example. If you're working in a company and you found, find out that this company does a lot of polluting stuff or has a larger impact that you were actually estimating it to have, then it can be really difficult to say, uh, you know, I'm just going to leave that company. What's actually going to happen is that you look for excuses that explain why it does make sense to work in that company. For instance, you'll convince yourself that it's good to have internal advocates in that company. So going down the list, we find this credence. That's the subtle art of mistrusting the source of your information. This can be science, this can be mistrusting the government. A very actual topic, and actually a lot of research now suggests that emotions like fear are playing a large role in denial. So we must pay attention to these little effects. Now, the sixth dragon of inaction that we need to pay attention to is that, well, in psychology we say that each change is connected to risks. And there are a lot of them. So, for instance, if we want to make a change, we're going to ask ourselves, the action that I'm going to do, is it going to work? Am I going to hurt myself in the process? Um, what's the payback of it over time? Or maybe most importantly, will people laugh at me? So, in fact, what we need in these, in these crises are not individual actions, but these collective and political actions. And what that means is that we need to step out of our comfort zone. Not just once, but permanently. So great, we have slayed the f first six dragons, uh, the first six barriers of an action. So now we're so close to this holy land of real climate action. But there's one thing missing. Now we've actually changed our behavior and we're doing an action, but pay attention. I can guarantee you the first action that you'll do is probably the one requiring the least effort. And that's okay. But you have to move on quickly from there. Secondly, when you've done your action, don't have your conscience eased immediately. But keep on going. And even worse, don't get caught by the rebound effect, doing one good deed and then saying, well, now that I've done that one good deed, um, maybe I can compensate that with another sin of mine, but the risk is that you'll nullify the good deed that you did in the first place. So to take that together, the seven dragons of an action are seven psychological barriers that almost all of us will face. And it leads me to say that blaming and shaming does not work. The enemies, the adversaries that we're facing in the crisis are not people but our ideas. So, as soon as you have an idea that's safe enough to try, and also good enough for now, then go for it. But realize, when you have the time to fight and to act for climate justice, when you can shove away a hobby, or maybe reduce your working hours, you are working from a position of immense privilege.